Welcome back to Fix This Build That. Today we're gonna make a table saw sled with an integrated stop block. A crosscut sled is a must have jig for the table saw in my opinion. Now paired with a stop block, it lets you make repeated cuts with ease. And the cuts are clean thanks to a zero clearance slot that's matched with your blade. Now I'll show you how to make the sled and I'm gonna give you some free plans for it too. And my old sled served me well for years until I decided to cut a 45 degree miter on it and I basically ruined the zero clearance slot. So today I'm going to be making a nicer version with a still simple design. I grabbed a large piece of half inch plywood and cut it down to 36 by 24 inches for the sled base. Now this is a bit larger than my old one for a little bit more capacity. The half inch plywood is going to help keep the weight down, but for the fences I'm going to use a double stack of 3 quarter inch plywood. I had a 5 foot off cut about 9 inches wide that I ripped down to 2 3 and a half inch strips. And next I cut both strips at 37 inches which will be for the back fence. And this left me with two strips at about 23 inches for the front fence. And gluing the plywood together makes a really beefy fence, but you also want to make sure it's as straight as possible. If you have any bow in the plywood that you're using, you can counteract that bow by flipping the boards in towards each other during the glue up. Now this will make the bowing boards work against each other and it kind of cancels it out most of the time. I thought a glue bottle flip would be a fun way to kick off this glue up. But apparently I'm more Lego Movie Batman than Dude Perfect. Yes, first try. And nothing special here, just a lot of glue and a lot of clamps. So keep the boards aligned as best you can, but we'll square everything up after they're dry so it's not a big deal if everything isn't perfect. And if you get a little bit overzealous with the glue like I did, then you can just scrape it off while it's still wet. This is going to be a lot easier than scraping it later, since you can't really access the board until you take the clamps off. Now I let the boards dry overnight, and then I took them out of the clamps the next day. After that, I flattened one side of each fence on my joiner, and then I cleaned up the opposite face on the table saw. You can clean up both faces on the table saw here if you don't have a joiner. And next, I needed to cut the fences to final width. I cut one end of the long back fence square on the miter saw, and then I marked the other cut using that sled base. The length of the short fence really doesn't matter here, so I just cut each end square. Now the last step for now was to put a round over on all the exposed edges for a little bit of creature comfort while I'm using the sled. And next I switched to making and mounting the runners. Now my old sled had hardwood oak runners, which worked out great, so I'm going to be using hardwood again. I grabbed a small piece of maple and some of the plywood offcuts for this step. And the key is to get a fit as tight as possible that will still slide easily in the miter slots. First I used the plywood to make a few test cuts and dial in that right sizing. Then I ran the maple board through to cut my runners to width. After that I adjusted the fence to 3 eighths of an inch and flipped the runners on edge and ran them through for their final thickness. I took the runners to the sled base and laid out and drilled three countersunk holes in each one. You'll notice the runners are a little bit longer than the base and this is going to make mounting it to the bottom a little bit easier. And next I used the miter slots to position the runners. I took little stacks of two washers and laid them along the miter slot. This way I could drop the runners on top of them and raise the runner above the tabletop surface. I set my fence at 24 inches which will give me two feet to the right of the blade and one feet to the left of the blade for my finished sled. And then I put a few dabs of super glue on the runners and set the base on top with some weight on it and let it set. After a couple minutes, I flipped the sled over and secured the runners permanently with number six, five eighths of an inch screws. I cut the runners to length on the base and then gave the table saw sled a test run. And it was a little sticky in spots, so I used a tip from the wood whisperer to fix it. I put pencil marks on the runners and then I ran it back and forth to see where it was rubbing. And with a little sanding and some trial and error, I got to slide nicely with no slop. Before mounting the fences, I wanted to add a handhold to the end of the sled for a little more ease of use. And I used a one and a half inch Fortzner bit to establish the ends of the hand slot, and I did what any dad joke enthusiast would do. I think I'll name him Fred. A little work with the jigsaw connected the handhold and gave Fred a sweet daft punk look. I guess sometimes you get lucky. And on that note, if you like woodworking, DIY projects, and dad jokes, go ahead and get subscribed. My old table saw sled was bare bones, and I just used a scrap clamp to the fence for my repeated cuts. An integrated stop block is going to make this a lot easier, so I'll be embedding a Craig mini track into the fence here. And using some supplies from Woodcraft, I'll make my own stop block. 
Instead of running the track all the way across the back of the fence, I'm going to leave a 2 inch space where the blade will come through the fence. This is going to keep my zero clearance intact, it's going to keep the blade away from the track and give me a little practice on stop data as while I'm doing it. I took the fence over to my router table and I made marks where the track would stop on either side of the blade. I used some blue tape to help with tear out since the grain was running in the wrong direction, but it really gummed up my bit so be careful about that. I marked the width of the cut and then I lined it up and made my first pass. I used these stop marks that I made on the fence along with the opening of my movable router fence which I had set to the size of my bit. So when I got up to my first mark I could stop knowing that that would leave me right at that line. To get the groove on the back side I had to make a plunge cut then I snuck back up to that line and then plowed out the rest of the cut. After I had those two complete I moved the router fence back to get my full width groove and repeated the process. Now this worked perfectly and the track fit right in. I finished it up by squaring up the end of each slot with a chisel for a nice clean look. If you had a 3 quarter inch router bit you could go ahead and just do this in one pass instead of two as well. While I was at the router table I added an eighth of an inch by eighth of an inch recess to the bottom of that back fence. This is going to give the sawdust a place to go when you're making repeated cuts so it doesn't build up between the workpiece and your fence. I had to cut down the mini track to fit into each side and I just did that over at my miter saw. Just make slow cuts here, but it is aluminum and you can cut it with carbide tip blades. Then I test fit the track and round it over the edges of each end with a file to keep them from catching on anything once they're installed. For a simpler version of mounting this track, you could also just use multiple passes on the table saw or a dado blade to make a groove the length of the fence. If you don't have a saw with a blade break, then this is probably a much quicker option. At this point I start putting the fences on the sled. The front fence is basically just to hold the sled together once it's cut. So I lined up the fence on the far edge so I could give Fred a solid base to stand on. And then I drilled and attached the fence with one and a half inch screws. Next I raised the blade up and I cut through the front fence and the base until I was about three inches from the back of the sled. And I'll use this cut line to set the back fence. I flipped the sled over and I drilled countersunk holes all along that back edge. And I made an extra one here at the end which I'm going to use to put my first screw in to do some adjustments. Then I flipped the sled back over and I clamped the fence into place, squaring it to that cut line as best I could. I secured one screw in the near end and put another screw in that extra hole that I drilled on the far end. And now we can really fine tune in this fence. I'm going to be using William Ng's five cut method, but a little bit of a simplified version. I numbered all four sides of an 18 by 18 inch piece of plywood. And then I ripped off a small portion on each side, rotating the freshly cut side onto the fence after each cut. When I got back to side one where I'd made my first cut, I cut a little bit larger strip this time. I used my calipers to measure the front and the back of this strip. I did a little math on my shop notebook here and I saw that I had 48 thousandths of air from front to back. But this is going to be multiplied over four cuts, so the air over the length of my strip was only actually 12 thousandths. Now using William Ng's method, you would do some math and get the adjustment to make at the other end of your fence. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to make a 12 thousandths adjustment at the exact length of my strip. I made a mark where the screw was on the near side of my fence, and that's the pivot point that this is going to move in once I take out that other screw. And I made another mark at the end of the strip, and this will be my adjustment point. I clamped the point of a small scrap of wood against my adjustment mark. Then I removed the screw on the far side, and I moved that fence back just a little bit. And my strip was thicker at the front, and I cut on the right side of the blade, so to correct it, I needed to move the right side of the fence backwards. I used a 12 thousandths feeler gauge and I put that right on the corner of the scrap block and then I snugged the fence up right against it. I clamped it down and I pre-drilled and put a screw in one of those other countersunk holes on the other end. Make sure you don't use the one you used before, it'll move the fence right back into place. I repeated the five cuts again and I took some new measurements. I was able to cut the air down by about 75% and it got me down to three thousandths over 16 and three quarters. And that ends up being only about eight thousandths or one 128th of an inch over four feet. And that is plenty good for all the work that I'm going to be doing. I clamped a level to the fence just to help resist any small movements while I was screwing it into place. Then I secured the fence in all of those countersunk hole locations except again leaving that initial adjustment hole open. Next I grabbed my T-Track and I secured it into place and started making the stop block. Now the stop block is just a simple design that I got from Jay Bates, he used this on his miter saw station. It's a small block of wood with a spline on the back. The spline is going to help keep the block from rotating when you're locking it down and this will help from throwing off the measurement that you just set for it. 
I use the sled to cut a small scrap block and cut a little spline which I fine tuned to fit the track using some sandpaper. Then I marked the block for the spline cut and I lowered the blade to cut a groove for it. Using these layout marks I cut a groove for the spline using the crosscut sled. And once I got it fine tuned just right I put a dab of glue on and locked the spline in place. Now you can see it's a great fit with no slop and you can see that little eighth inch offset of the base and that will allow for sawdust to clear under it just like the fence. I took the stop block to the drill press and I drilled a hole in the middle of the spline. I'm using a knob and T-bolt from Woodcraft like I mentioned earlier. So to make room for the T-bolt, I marked it on the back and chiseled it out with my Wood River socket chisels. I'll have links down below to the track, the hardware, and these chisels and more. Woodcraft has a ton of great woodworking hardware and tools, so go check them out. They probably have something that you need for your next project. With my new stop block in place, I could make the safety feature for this sled. I cut two blocks to 4x3 inches, and then I glued them together and rounded over the edges. I used an 87 tops baseball card as a shim, since that's about all they're worth these days, and attached the block to the back of the sled over the blade exit point. And my blade can't cut higher than the safety block, so as long as I keep my hands on top of or to the side of this block, I know that they'll always be safe of the blade. Now, this is a nice upgrade to my old table saw sled, and I'm really looking forward to spending some time with Fred the Sled making some cool projects. Hey, if you want free plans to build your own, there's a link right down below that you can go check out. If you want to check out some more shop projects, I got them right there, and YouTube thinks you'll like that one as well. Until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.